previously on Sailing Catalpa. We spend a beautiful couple of weeks at the stunning island of Vitoro, diving, catching our food and having some much needed good times. While we've been anchored here, we met this little girl, Amika, from the local village nearby. She was quite shy at first, but warmed to us pretty quickly waiting most afternoons for a play on the beach. It was this little girl that touched Bella's heart and she wanted to give her some of her clothes. I thought she would like some of my clothes. I don't reckon she would get any new ones very often. And I have lots, so I thought I would share what I could. This afternoon, we took them over and I think she was pretty happy. We're too young to talk about Next morning, Amika and her sister Gianna were on the beach dressed in the clothes waiting for us to come and play. They were super stoked today and looked really good in my clothes I gave them. And it made me feel so good to see them happy. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's Amika. Amika. Amika is a junkie. Gianna. Gianna. Oh, cartwheels. Whee! <laughs> Letting go of our hearts Close your eyes Pretend that it's your first kiss Darling, can you feel it? Oh, so ignorant bliss All the whole night through Cause we don't want to grow up And they showed us their rock skimming skills We didn't use a lot of words to each other But smiles and kindness is universal we had a great time here together and these two girls and this place I will never forget. Cause we don't wanna grow up. Oh. So what did you do today? We were supposed to leave today and we didn't leave. What happened? What happened today? Well, we've been fortunate enough to have a mobile call him a marine technician. His name's Ben. I didn't actually film it, but uh, just been all over the electrical system. I had a lot of missing fuses. We had a fuse actually nearly catch fire and was melting the other day. Uh, also wired up, ready for installation. We actually, up until now, we haven't had a, a uh, oil pressure alarm or temperature alarm. So uh, that's been worrying since we left Australia, so we sort of got that mostly sorted. I just got to get a sender unit. Um, yeah, and just a big tidy up of just bits and pieces. I'm a very knowledgeable, helpful guy. They've been cruising so. for about 15 years, so they they know all what they're talking about. Yeah. And the kids and I went over and uh, played with the, the two girls that we met over ashore and had a really nice time. So our day was funner than Lee's day, but he's having a beer now and he's very relaxed and I think we're about to watch a movie. So, good night everyone. So yesterday was way too windy to leave, but this morning, it's about seven, it's about seven? About seven o'clock and 
Yeah, there's no wind. Well, there's a bit of wind, but not much. Not to what compared to what we've had. So I think we're going to go and untie all our lines and see if we can get out of here. First, we'll go say see you next time to our neighbours. Thank you guys for the good times until our paths cross again. First things first, we're going to, we've got two anchor stern anchors out. So we'll pull those up. And we've got another line tied off to a line that's already existing in the water. So that will be the last thing to come up. First, stern anchor up. Mum helped free the anchor from in the water. Number two, that was easy. One more line left, Dad got back into Catalpa to drive and have control while mum untied the line. Just in case we got a big gust of wind, but it was all good. And then pull the anchor in, hopefully it comes up easy enough. And the new windlass worked a treat. Later at Toro Island and Timor Leste, time to head back to Indonesia. But first, let me secure this box. Our passage to Kupang is about 180 nautical miles and the wind prediction doesn't look so good. It may take a while. So we're on our way. We're on our way to Kupang. We're going along nicely. Just turn the engine off. What winds have we got, Captain? Oh, we just got 12 knots on the beam. 12 knots on the beam! Very nice conditions, ladies and gentlemen. We will uh, hoping this continues. <laughs> They are really hairy. I have. I have got really hairy legs. I'll zoom in. It's really attractive. Oh, look at them. They're so sexy. Hey. So it's about 8 o'clock at 9. We've just turned the engine off because we've just got some wind, which is really nice. What's the wind doing? Knots. We've got 15 knots on the towards the nose. Towards the nose? But we're going what? I'm um, guess. Hang on, I'll guess. About five and a half. 6.4. See, we're going 6.4 knots. Wow, it's quicker than what we were motoring. So, hopefully, we don't know if this is going to keep up, but we'll see. There's a bit of a dead spot coming up that's supposed to have no wind. So, we'll take advantage while we've got wind. Lee's gonna be first on watch because he can't go to sleep. So he stays on watch until he's really, really tired and then he can sleep. Otherwise, he just doesn't sleep. So that's okay with me. I'm gonna wash up after dinner and uh, go to sleep. Have a good night, everybody. So Lee just said, come up top and um, see how fast we're going. We're doing nine. We're staying around nine knots. We have never gone this fast ever. <laughs> What's the wind? It's uh, 16, 17 knots, 18. We're getting up from about 16 to 20 knots. Um, must have a bit of current for this because we're sort of average. Well, we're sitting on about 9.5 and for Catalpa, that's flying. It's just, just about hitting the 10 mark. So we must have some really good current with us or something. We're going the right way with the right winds for once. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm ready if I fall over. I'm ready. I was just bringing up our um, life jackets and <laughs> I must have lent on the thing to pull inflate it and it had all inflated so I've got my life jacket on and I'm ready in case something happens. <laughs> We're still going like nine knots. We're still doing nine knots? 9.9. 9. 9.9 9 knots. It's crazy. And uh, I'm prepared for the worst case scenario right now. 
<laughs> big wave just comes straight over. Might have to drop a bit more sail. We're sort of getting up to 25 knots now. And we've got two reefs in, but I don't know. Let's see how we go. I'll give it another 10 minutes. Not meant to be this strong. Not even meant to be wind on the charts for this section. It was like four knots and we've got 22. So, we thought we were going to have like a really still night. We thought we didn't even have, um, there's no wind predicted at all. We had strong winds until early in the morning. So we've got about 40 nautical miles to go. So that means we should be in Kupang in about eight hours, roughly. Always happy when the sun comes up after night sailing. So we've got wind and we're going along at six knots. There's about 13 knots on the beam. It's really nice. And we've got about 20 nautical miles to go till we get to Kupang, so under four hours. So the wind's just picked up, it's about 20 knots. This is inside Catalpa as we sail along in some good winds. So we're about an hour off arriving into Kubang. Going five and a half knots. The wind is 20, 20 to 25 knots. We're nearly there. She's windy. 25 knots, it's backed off since last night. We had over 30 knots and uh, had the tailpa up to, uh, just sitting on 10 knots. Obviously we had some current winds, oh, but that's yeah. the fastest catalpa's ever really sat on. We've, we've hit the 10 before, but um, yeah, to maintain 10 knots the whole way down, or for a good part of the way down, was our fastest yet. Oh. <laughs> we had to punch into the wind for the last hour, but other than that, we had a great little passage. We're here! So we arrived back in Kupang yesterday afternoon, about 5 o'clock in the afternoon and um, we've actually pulled up somewhere different than where we anchored last the last two times and so the boys are going over to a new beach to leave the tender to see how it all goes but we met a guy yesterday he came over um, on a cat he was he's on a catamaran actually and they he came over just to tell us not to anchor in front of Teddy's bar where we usually anchor um, they said it was pretty rolly and rough but he also encountered the same things what we did when we first arrived in Kupang and he preferred down here and, and we're happy we've anchored down here. He actually had the guy that helps you out um, at this end of the beach and his name's Napo and he said he's really lovely. So we met him yesterday and he's going to meet Lee ashore today just to go on the, the motorbike around and check in easily. Um, but first of all the boys have gone ashore to see if they can find internet because we've stuffed up a bit. We've we should have checked the paperwork before we got here while we had internet and printed out um, the registration again. Uh, you do an online registration now to check into Indonesia. It's all quite pretty easy, but what we did was we got our visa in Dili um, and at the time Sean Tao was aboard. So she was going to come to Indonesia with us so when I did our visa stuff and our online things and I printed all that information out Chantel was still aboard because that was the plan we didn't know we were going to be stuck in Dili for so long um, but so yeah until now we've printed it out and we just went to put it all together and we've just realized that Chantel's on on our registration so we've got to change it and to do that we've got to go online and do it and so we don't have internet that is our first problem of arriving into Cooper. Other than that, we've had no problems. Um, we had a lot of wind getting here. It was very, very windy. It was a, supposed to be. We looked on the weather before we came. We thought, oh, we're going to have no wind. We're going to motor all the way. But we had, you know, between 20 and 30 knots the entire way. So, yeah. Had only a few sections where we had to motor. But we got here pretty quickly. And we're here now. And we're checking back into Indonesia. So, must say, this backpack has been 
Bloody great. Waterproof and all. Just gets used on a daily basis. But anyway, we're gonna go and clear in. We got here late yesterday afternoon. So. We had some dramas this morning because I didn't have the um, paperwork printed out. We had to go and, well, Leah went and sure and got some internet. That's all done, but now it's lunchtime and they shut at lunch and uh, I think they're not back in their office till two, but Lee's going to go ashore anyway. Pretty standard for Indonesia. It's all good. We're always late anyway, so it works <laughs> out fine. <laughs> we'll be there when they open up after lunch anyway. After lunch. So yeah, Lee's going to go ashore. I'm going to drop him over because he doesn't really know where to leave the tender. So hopefully we're going to go find Napa. Go get out of here. guys um, we've just checked into Kupang um, how did it all go it went really good um, we left the boat at about one o'clock or I left the boat at one o'clock um, returned just after five o'clock so for us that's a really easy check-in really quick um, to get around and see quarantine customs immigration and the harbour master um, and the immigration's a little bit further away from the rest so um, but to wrap all that up in just an afternoon's work, that was, I was really happy with that. Tick of approval. Tick. <laughs> Welcome to Indonesia. Um, with the help of Napa. So last time we did it on our own, this time we noticed on noon site people talk about this guy Napa that's here to help all the cruisers out. And he made it so quick and so helpful. So that's our experience up till now. Um, so noon site, where I got Napa's name from, um, they also mentioned Teddy's Bar and other names of people who can help, but this anchorage is just south of Teddy's Bar. I think it's Napsane or Napsan Bay. Probably got that so wrong, but anyway. Um, it's much better anchorage, much better access for your tender, and it's only about 400, 500 metres south of Teddy's Bar where they say to check into in Kupang. So that being said, um, today went really well, really easy. And We're back. So we've got fuel and all we've got to do here in Kupang is stock up on food because this is our ma last major port for a while. So we'll go to the shopping centre today. <laughs> we've checked back into Indonesia and we are fueled up so we've got all our fuel done. And now we're just going to go ashore and provision. So, go and see what we can get. And then hopefully we get everything and we can leave for Rote tomorrow. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Bit of good old fashioned pizza hut, eh? Ooh, Ooh pizza. Oh, yes. oh, is that Fill us in on what we've got going on down here. Pizza. Is it a good task? Looks a bit empty down there, mate. Mama just can't get enough of the rice. <laughs> I swear she's Asian. <laughs> I love rice. <laughs> oh, that's why she loves me. Mr. Nasi. I've married Lee because his last name's wrong. Everyone here calls me Mr. Nasi. Mr. Nasi. <laughs> that's provisioning for food done and dusted. Yes, look out! <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how a bit of chocolate makes for an easy tender down the beach. <laughs> A massive thank you to the Curvins family for the thoughtful parcel. It took two months to arrive in Indonesia and another month for us to receive it. Package has come from Ambon. It got sent from America, but it, we missed it by three days. Um, and now it's got sent thanks to Nico. Nico sent it through to his friend Yuppie 
and we he dropped it off to us today at the shopping centre. So massive thank you to you guys um, for organising that for us. What's in here, we so don't know what's in here. This is very exciting. Whoa, that's so many sets! Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, got some moleskin sketchbooks. Thank you so much. Oh, we got a little socket set there, Taj. And that little box is our drone piece. So we got a spare one. Oh, that's cute. So, oh, look at that little set. Got a nice oh, little set of little, little tools here. Thank you so much, guys. We finally got it and appreciate your kindness very much. So we're here with our friend Napa. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> If you come to Kupang, this is the man you see. So, in Kupang. Yes. So last time we anchored in Kupang six months ago, we we're off Teddy's Bar. So down here, it's a lot better anchorage. Um, the weather situation down here is better. It's not as rolly. Um, there's better beach access with fuel supplies, checking in, doing all the customs, immigration, and so on, clearing in um, with Napa. Napa, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Napa. So this morning we're leaving Kupang. We were here for a few days and this experience or this time it actually wasn't that bad so um, I know we've talked down Kupang before but I think um, it's redeemed itself this time. So today we're heading off to Rote. So that was episode 97. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. What are we doing next episode? We're leaving Kupang and heading to Rote to Go surfing! So also, if you like that video, make sure put a thumbs up and subscribe. And you know what else you guys should do? Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Sailing Catalpa. See you next time. Bye. Bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, let's just start from the beginning. Okay. It all comes all thanks to you all. to your